Okay, and welcome back. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, move our statistical development of modern data mining and modern regression to the next level up, which is introducing ensembles of trees, ensembles of models. So I'm going to switch back to my slides part here. And uh, uh, let me go over here and start the tree ensembles part. So first, we're going to grow a tree on uh, the training data. Uh, then, uh, and it just gives us one way to predict things. Then the next part will find a way to grow another tree, which is different from currently available. And we're going to repeat it many times, say 500 replications. Now, when we work in the regression side of the story here, so the response will be the average of all individual three predictions. When we work in the classification, again, I'm not talking about classification in this presentation, but for those who are interested, the end result is usually overall class assignments based on the majority of votes. Now, the very powerful advantage here is that every new tree starts with the complete set of data. Now, so therefore, the real important part here is how do we come up with the multiple trees? How do we grow multiple trees? Uh, it turns out that there are different methods that are available uh, to make it happen. And uh, if you have access to a lot of uh, data, and some people do, I mean, we live in uh, the, uh, the terabeta, uh, teradata uh, age and all of that, terabytes and petabytes and so on. So you can always have non-overlapping samples drawn from a large database. Uh, that's a kind of uh, pores meant to generate multiple samples. Uh, if you have access to classification problems, you can experiment with different priors. So I'm not going to talk about it in this presentation. We have uh, talked about it a lot in other videos. The uh, most important part is that you can induce multiple trees if you generate bootstrap samples. And this is the prime topic of the conversation here. And on the other hand, you can also grow trees with randomly perturbed splits, and that means that in, you can still work with the same sample, but you can do something to your uh, algorithm such that there is, you induce somewhat different tree. So these two will be the critical part in the construction of an algorithm generally known as random forest, and uh, this is what uh, I'm trying to explain here. Now, a few words about the bootstrap sampling procedure. Uh, the bootstrap sampling, I mean, it's such a kind of funny name. I don't even know what's the origins of it. It would be an interesting research. Uh, but basically, the way it works is you say, uh, take the original records and do sampling with replacement. That's the key until a new sample of the same size is generated. So suppose I have 2,000 records here, uh, and uh, I do 2,000 sampling with replacement rounds. When I pick one record, record its number, and put it back, reshuffle, then pick another record, record number, do it 1,000 times, what you will discover is that 732 records were sampled exactly uh, zero times, so they, they were never sampled. 749 records were sampled exactly once, 359 records were sampled exactly twice, and so on and so forth. There were three records that were sampled six times, and again, it's because we are dealing with sampling with replacement. So the end result is that you have a new data set where about 38% of the original sample is excluded, about 37% included exactly once, and the remaining records are included two, three, four times, or maybe even more. Now, the beauty of bootstrap sample is that the combinatorics of this is such that even when you have a small sample, say 200 observations, you have an enormous number of different bootstrap samples that you can construct. And once you have a bootstrap sample, you can induce multiple trees. That allows me to introduce a random forest algorithm. Developed by Leah Bryman and Dale Cutler at the UC at Berkeley. And uh, the RF uh, random forest algorithm can be uh, presented as a very simple set of steps. We are going to build an ensemble of trees. 
So there's going to be not just a single regression tree, but a whole group of trees. Now each tree is grown on a bootstrap sample from the learning set. So each tree you use bootstrap sample to grow that tree and we know that that's roughly two-thirds of the original data. Each time each tree is grown on its own new bootstrap sample. Then you have a number p that is specified which is the only user parameter specified. By default it's a square root of the number of predictors such that during tree growing at each node you're only looking at that sampled number of predictors. So in other words not only do you build tree based on a bootstrap sample which is a sampling layer from the observations but you're also sampling predictors at each node. So if you have 10,000 original predictors and when you're looking at the best split of node number 5 you're only looking at a random sample of 100 predictors and then you ignore everyone else. As you go to the next node you look at the different sample of 100 predictors and so on and so forth. So the bootstrap sample operates at the tree level, uh, predictor sampling operates at the node level. Those are the only things you need to do and once you have the end result you can combine all of those trees together, do the predictions based on averaging for regression and the end result you have this nice uh, uh, nice uh, predictive response model. So at uh, that part, uh, let me discard all of this and uh, move back to the software and uh, uh, what I'm going to do in the next part, I'll quickly highlight how one can work with the random forest and then we'll move on to other more interesting uh, ensemble method approaches.